Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. State's 2-0. and Went to Kansas State and got a win on Saturday. And it's time for film study. We'll see kind of how they ran up those 31 points, held Kansas State to just one touchdown in the game. Film study coming at you right now. Big run from Kylan Hill on the counter. Gets a handoff. Get in that big hole. Outrun two linebackers. Run around to safety. And go get a big play in scoring position. Let's take a look. A couple things jump out first. First thing, let's watch the tight end, Justin Johnson, this counter. Everything's going to get blocked back this way. His job is to go back and pick up the end man coming from the backside, and he really does a nice physical job. So now he's completely knocked out of the play and can't help. And look at something else here, the blocking of the offensive line. Uh, Island, the left tackle, is going to have a wide rush, and so he's going to kind of get him out of the way. The left guard, Darrell Williams, does an excellent job on that defensive tackle, of picking him up and driving him out this way while Jenkins, the center, is going to get in front and you just get this great big hole for the running back to get in because uh, they create it. They have leverage and a hat in the right place. So at this point in the run, there's Williams getting his guy this way. He's got leverage, so now you're sealed here. And because of this block right here by Elton Jenkins, now you're going to have it sealed this way. And he actually goes around that right tackle um, Stuart Reese to get in there. The other thing is unblocked, unblocked linebackers, both with a shot at the ball carrier right here. And this is all on Kylan Hill to make a miss. Smart, anticipating it, and the athletic ability to get away. Two guys lined up here, unblocked, that can't get a hand on him just because of his agility. Safety, poor angle, thinking he's going to get down in there, does not understand yet how fast this kid is. And so he, now he's out the gate, down the sideline, and you get down there in touchdown territory. I like this behind look. Again, watch first here. Tight end, Justin Johnson, watch him blow him up. Really physical block. And one more time, watch it develop uh, on the offensive line. You're going to get wide here by Island. Here's Darrell Williams, got him completely pushed out. And Calhoun and Jenkins are going to make this hole right here that he can uh, easily get in. And again, this illustrates how good this is. This is the backside defensive end. He's come all the way over here, and Stuart Reese is just pushing him somewhere. And because of that, you got clear pass to this running back by two linebackers, and they barely get a hand on him. So you get down there, but you get a field goal instead of touchdown. Here's what led to that. They go RPO. He reads it perfectly and then just zings it over his head. And one thing, Fitz is really locked in and like amped up here on this throw and just throws it so hard. Even if he had thrown it at him, it might be hard to catch. But he reads the RPO perfectly. When he came to the line, he sees the four down and then four defenders here essentially in the box. So it's got to be at least three linebackers, two safeties, or two and two. So what he knows is man-to-man, man-to-man, man-to-man everywhere. There's not anybody going to be dropping back here. And so you see where his eyes are on the mesh point. His eyes are right here on that defender who could get in his throwing lane. That's who he's reading, I believe. If he were to settle in here, he's going to give this football on the run. And he might make yards. But with him coming downhill, it's wide open on the slant. So it's the right read. You just got to settle your feet and hit him. So Kansas State, they're either trying to tie with a field goal or go ahead with a touchdown. And this is the fumble play where State should have gotten the ball. Leo Lewis off the edge, hits him, ball comes out, and then Gary Green goes over and recovers. So before you even get to the review of it, look at the play first. Um, State has nickel in the game. This is Brian Cole, and there's only two linebackers, Errol Thompson off this edge, Leo Lewis off this edge. You see those two coming off the edge with that other safety creeping down. Now you know exactly what the coverage is. It's called zero coverage, no help. It's man-to-man -man on all four of the receivers. They're coming after and bringing seven. Eyes are over here to the three-man side. He just doesn't realize that he has um, no time because the back whiffs on Leo Lewis. The other thing, just before contact, to notice, he wants to go to the third man inside. Why can't he? Because they have zone blitzed here basically by dropping Jeffrey Simmons, the nose tackle, in the middle where the linebacker would be. So they brought two linebackers off the edge and dropped the tackle out to get in the throwing lane. That's a great defensive call, and that leads to him hesitating and hanging on to the football because he didn't want to throw a pick to a nose guard. 
So then the ball gets knocked out. They called it a fumble as they should have, and then they review it and decided uh, that it was a pass. Rulebook says that this arm has to be going forward in an intentional forward motion to throw the ball for it to be, um, you know, a forward pass. It's not intentional. That's why the ball came out. Then, you notice that? Before the ball ever comes forward, he's already lost his grip because you could see the football rotate. Watch that again, just a split second or two. Again, watch the football rotate before it goes forward. He's got it in his grip, holding the laces now. Now the football is no longer in his grip with the laces before it ever goes forward. You can see the white stripe on the football has now rotated. So he's lost the grip before it ever even gets shot forward. So it definitely should have been not only upheld, but confirmed what they called him. Okay, here's the Colin Hill touchdown reception that put him up for good. He swings out of the backfield, does not get covered. A linebacker gets lost in the fray, and you're able to complete it for a TD. The way the route is called is important. You know, first of all, you're on the left hash, so you're into the short side of the field, the boundary. And the route here is tight end up the field and getting across in this space past the first down stick on second and six. And another defender going to ride his hip and then stop out here so that you get one, two, and three as your options going either toward, toward, or past the, the stick. When they snap it, what happens is they're matching up on the tight end, and the, the flat defender is this linebacker who's inside. And because of this route and this route, he gets hung up and can't get out there and really cover that swing. You saw Fitzgerald's eyes in the middle of the field, and once he realizes they're staying inside, he knows he's got a guy he can get it in his hands right away who's a touchdown maker. And then a finish that is physical also. Watch how he takes on contact. He's got that football secured, and that's a DB putting a lick on him. These guys in the secondary for Kansas State were pretty good, but he hangs on to the football and then kind of takes on the contact, not square, but gets on top of it so that he can still get in the end zone. All right, here, watch Errol Thompson drop and make the play on the interception. Dives in front, really nice catch. I mean, you won't see a linebacker lay out and catch one any better. We'll take another look at it. The thing that I think causes this first and foremost is – Jeffrey Simmons bearing down on the quarterback, pressuring him big time. And so Simmons is going to get there and hit him as he throws. And the other thing is, I think there's confusion by quarterback on where the ball should go, number one, and then where is the receiver actually going? They've actually got two guys open on this play on second 10. And as he gets hit, he just throws the ball here in no man's land and throws it right to a linebacker. Watch Simmons. Here he is, work to the outside, eventually come three, uh, free, hits him as he throws. You have a receiver back here, but because he's getting hit, he just never could get enough on the football. Excellent catch by a middle linebacker right there. Next rushing touchdown. They're going to read the defensive end and zone scheme, give it because he takes quarterback, stiff arm past the linebacker, outrun him to the end zone. Now, one thing you notice about this is regardless of how it's called on the defensive side, this defensive end who's left unblocked, they're reading him in the run game. He knows it. Every defensive end knows this and feels it. He takes quarterback. They are concerned about the running ability of the quarterback. So right there, he's going to take QB and force the ball here. Problem is, look at this. It's blocked up perfectly. That's Stuart Reese and Calhoun on that right side got everything on that defensive line, all three of them shoved almost all the way out to the numbers. And so if you were to see this from behind, the size of the, the look of the hole for Colin Hill, there's just nobody there to stop him from getting to the next level. The next level is this player who one-on-one -on -one there has no chance. And then the speed to outrun a couple of DBs to the end zone. Second one, tackle for loss, Jeffrey Simmons, they don't block him. I don't know if it's necessarily a bust as much as it is the call to understand kind of how they're running this quarterback power with the quarterback following the back. The plan, What it looks like to me the plan is to lead with the back over to this side, which might mean picking up the end or whoever's in the line. 
And it looks as if tight end and right tackle are down on the tackle trying to get up to the linebacker. So center and left guard and left tackle are all trying to come this way to get out in front of this in a short yard of situation. The thing is, they don't play it base up on the defensive front. What happens is they twist. They bring Montez Sweat around. So watch the, um, watch the action here on the left side between the guard and the tackle. They're stepping into this gap, and now he's turning back. But because Montez Sweat's running a twist, when the tackle turns back, the first man he picks up is Montez Sweat, and nobody's picking up Jeffrey Simmons. The other thing is you, it's, there's a potential for a bust potentially from that tight end. Maybe he's supposed to get in that gap. At any rate, because of the twist and the way they block it, nobody picks up the defensive tackle, Jeffrey Simmons. Again, zone read, don't block the end, read him. He's going to hesitate, give it to Kylan Hill. He never gets a hand on him. Outruns three, and now it's a foot race. They get him down inside the 10-yard line. But again, what I see is a defensive end that in this zone scheme is preoccupied with the quarterback. And maybe that's what he's being coached is, hey, we'd rather take our chances trying to get a running back where they've got people versus you flying down inside and a quarterback keeps it to the outside. Regardless, that's what causes the play to work. Fitzgerald reading that in, he hesitates and just sits down right there. Now watch the next move. In this instant, the ball has been given, and he's got an eye on it and can see that, but his feet are so frozen because he's preoccupied with the quarterback going outside that from here, with four yards to go, watch this burst by Kylan Hill to step right by an unblocked defensive end who's standing there waiting on him, and he never gets a finger on him. One, two, three, and he's out the gate. He's full speed when you blink. So, you know, for Fitzgerald, first game back since last November, a little bit of, you know, he called it rust. I just think he was excited. Ball jumped out of his hands a couple times. At other times, it didn't. The ball kind of came out funny. But then after, you know, a few series in the first half, he started to kind of settle in there. And you saw him really make some excellent throws in the second half. Four receivers, first and ten, coming off your own five-yard line. Four-man route, getting it down the field out of tight, bunch-it-up formation. And they make it work. First of all, watch the protection. He stands in there, steps up, patient, lets the crosser get in there, and then makes the throw. So the route obviously works against the coverage, um, but watch the protection. You get a three-man front, so the center's got a nose on him. They actually bring five as a, you know, a total of five. What's great about in this situation in drop back, everybody – Hat on a hat. There's three on two in the middle. Kylan Hill steps over here to pick up his guy, and Reese has his responsibility. There are no busts. The two off the edge are pushed behind him. He steps up, and again, look at his time. It's one-on-one, one-on-one football, and all three guys in white jerseys are winning. When you have that kind of time, you can make a strong throw, and this is a really strong throw. It's a window where there's a linebacker inside of it. There's a defender on his back shoulder and one on top, and he fires that thing in there for a strike, a good confident throw into space. So about three plays later, it's what I believe is an RPO. He's going to read that safety at second level, pull it out of there, and throw that strike. Great catch by Austin Williams. You go back and kind of see, again, what I see. Pre-snap, nobody in the middle of the field. Even though the safety's deep, he's way over here off the hash, which means it'd be easy for him to come and for this guy to jump into man coverage here, and that's exactly what happens. The other thing is nobody drops, and you can see where Fitz's eyes are. Look what he's looking at. He's looking at safety right here inside the hash, who's the one player who could jump inside and cover up or, or get in the throwing lane of a slant route. So with his eyes there, if he comes down, he's going to pull this football and throw it. So now he's up, and now you're clear. You're going to have actually a couple of options. But the play fake happened on this side, and the back, as well as that offensive lineman, are trying to get over here to pick up these two off the edge. But athletic quarterback, going to step back, sidearm it, still get it in there for a strike, even though he's about to get hit by two. So just like the run play we saw earlier, the tight end coming across right here. Right there, stepping up as the defender, 
that Fitz is reading through the line of scrimmage when he saw him come up, pulls it out, little flip throw, and throws a strike for a touchdown. It's a heck of a catch by Austin Williams as well. Last touchdown for Kylan Hill. Run play, everything gets washed down to the left hash. Linebackers come, now he's on the second level, gets a block from Thomas, runs over the safety. A lot going on right there, but it starts on the offensive line. And what you have is defense all going this way to follow that offensive line. That backside end is going to go a little too flat, gets caught way down inside. So if you notice, the ball was snapped right here. Uh, not quite midfield, but close. By the time Colin Hill gets to the hole or to the line of scrimmage, that entire defensive line is going to be over here outside the hash beyond where the ball was snapped. And again, you're totally on the edge and totally gone with all this space to get to the next level. One key block, Dedrick Thomas gets into his guy and keeps him from making the play initially. And the other thing is just run through a guy. That's just making a play and being more physical right there. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. And I appreciate Renaissance Bank for sponsoring these videos. You ought to check them out yourself over at renaissantnation.com. As always, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Radio Wyatt. And my website, mattwyattmedia.com. Got links to everything, including my podcast, the Matt Wyatt Podcast. Anywhere you can get it, including on Spotify recently. Thanks a lot, Spotify. Uh, and you can just download and listen whenever you're on the go. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.